connected through Torah, over the phone, over Skype, whatever means possible, and it has eventually um, progressed into, oh, it started off meeting in person? Oh, see, I wasn't familiar, I wasn't that familiar with it, thank you, Zahava, for enlightening me. So, um, I guess what we are doing is how Parnas and Torah started out. <laughs> it has then developed into a global phenomenon where people are being set up and learning together from all over the world and the person that is responsible to start for starting Partners in Torah is here tonight. So I would like to introduce Rabbi Gewurz to say a few words. inspiration. It's good to see this enthusiastic, vibrant, dynamic group of people learning, interacting, seeing Mrs. Grunitsky doing an extraordinary job in organizing the program. And, you know, you know with uh, Yiddish Nachas, uh, so I'm getting a lot of Yiddish Nachas from seeing the work of uh, Rabbi Aryeh and, and Zahava Rolby and the love that they have for everybody here in the community and the return love and uh, inspiration that everyone has from them. So it's really a lot of nachas for me. Um, as many of you may have known, uh, may know that Rabbi Wolby is grandson of a great sage of our generation, um, who I've had the merit of speaking to, not nearly as much as uh, Rabbi Arye did, uh, but he's a great sage. And uh, he was married to a great woman, and that great woman passed away a few weeks ago. And uh, I went to the Shiva home where uh, Rabbi Wolby's father was sitting Shiva. And I don't know if you know, <coughs> if you've met uh, Mr. Wolby, Avi Wolby, but he's like, he's a tough guy. You know, he's, he's, he's in control of everything. He's, you know, he's got it. He's Israeli, he's, he's cool. I've never seen him vulnerable. Never. And my daughter married his son. And we've had many, we've celebrated many occasions together. And he's a genuinely caring, good person. But I saw, I heard a moment of vulnerability and I don't know how to describe it, but other than that, that um, I had never heard before. And 
that was when he told me how difficult it was for him to be the son of this great sage. Like wherever I'd go, they'd say, oh, Shlomo will be son. Right? And they'd have all these sets of expectations of who he is or who he would be or who he should be. And uh, I think he said he's even writing a book about it. Uh, the son of. <laughs> so I came out with my wife, Chani, in the back of the room. We came to celebrate Shlomo's Bar Mitzvah. And uh, it's such, talking about Nachas, to, to, see, to see Shlomo studying with a study partner himself. What a mature thing for a 12 year old to be doing on a weeknight. It's just, it's extraordinary. What do you say? 13. 13. He's 13. Well, yeah, when? But he started out when he was 12. Yes. Uh, so it's very inspiring. Uh, but I think it's also hard for Shlomo to be the son of Ayin Zahaba Wobi. Like, it's like, you know, there's a whole set of expectations that you have to be like your parents, to be, to be, you know, you know, what are you, right? So there's an insight from the Parsha, not this week's Torah portion, which is called Toldos, but the parsha of Noah, which starts off pretty much the same way as this week's Torah portion, it says, Ela toldos Noah. These are the, these are the, how do you translate, toldos? The generations, the, the, that which he gave birth to would be probably more accurate. Uh, and then it says, instead of saying who, the people are who his children were, it says Noach ish tzaddik. Noach was a great man. So uh, the Torah seems to be stopping in the middle of a sentence. The Torah says, these are the generations of Noach. And Noach, then it says, Noach was a tzaddik, was a righteous person. If you look at this week's Torah portion, it talks about Noach. It says, Ela told us Noach, uh, excuse me, uh, the Ela told us Abraham ben Yitzchak, right? Abraham, hold, uh, excuse me. The Ela told us Yitzchak ben Abraham. These are the, these are the children of, uh, of the, the generations of Yitzchak, the son of Abraham. Abraham, holy this Yitzchak, Abraham gave birth to Yitzchak. So there's a contrast in this week's Torah portion compared to Noah. In Noah, it talks about his being a righteous person, it's kind of like stopping in mid-sentence. And this week, it says that at least Abraham gave birth to to Isaac. There's a lot to talk about, and if you have any questions, uh, you should be bothered by them, because there's a lot of inconsistencies, and that's probably what you should be doing in your learning, stopping and thinking about why things are different, why things say what they say. But the one thing that struck me is this <coughs> difference between this week's Torah portion and then, because no, it says that the, 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 uh, the future, the outgrowth of Noah was that he was a tzaddik, he was a righteous person. It wasn't that, it wasn't, the first thing was his sons. As Rashi points out, it's his accomplishments. And really, anybody who is relatively new to Jewish learning, relatively new to Jewish practice, or they've been doing it for a long time, but maybe they don't have it in their genes from, from, you know, from the previous generation, maybe only a few generations back, they're not getting the same inspiration that they get from, like Shlomo Wolbe gets from, from his parents. Many of us don't have, didn't grow up that way. Many of us didn't have that, <coughs> those models in our life to, to follow. And what we see you, from Noah is that Noah was an independently righteous person not getting into the differences of how righteous he was compared to Abraham, not compared to Abraham, that's a separate point. But Noah made himself through his actions. It wasn't through his children. It wasn't who your parents are. Shlomo, I'm talking to you, stop looking away. Right? The, 
it's not who your parents are, it's who you are. It's what you do and what you accomplish. And every one, every one of us, including myself, it's not our previous generations. Those are nice fringe benefits that we have when we are, can, can kind of like draw from the inspiration of a previous generation. But not everybody is as fortunate as you, Shlomo. But even you, who has those role models, even you who has that inspiration on a daily basis, you have to establish, you have to be a man in your own right. And each one of us have to be our own person. So it's hard to be the, the child of a great person. But there's also a benefit to not being a child of a great person. Because you start from, you start, you start, you make yourself, you establish yourself. You are the beginning. Generations, you know, every person who has, who has inspired, who has personally grown in their connection to God, in their observance, in their leadership in the community, they inspire thousands of people and nobody knows who their parents were. So we don't need that. It's a nice fringe benefit, but every one of us can grow. So what I got from so much from what your father told me that night by the Shiva house, is how difficult it was, and that's like it was a tremendous insight into who he was and who he is and what he lived with, and his, I guess, inspiration and challenge. Uh, I think it's, everybody has their own opportunity to have their own people who they can be inspired by, and they can grow by, and they can become leaders and independently great people in their own right. Hope every one of you successfully reach your maximum potential. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to mention, I forgot to um, say beforehand, I want to thank Rabbi Ari Waldi and Zahava for sponsoring tonight's impression to Dr. Nazora in honor of their son, Shlomo Radisha. And I do want to say that I, so and um, Jonathan, I really hope that we're going to be able to do a video of the two of you and your growth and partners in Torah because you have been amazing and committed. So really, you deserve a round of applause for that.